Hi, this is Amanda Dolan, and welcome to the Mental Society. Today, I am joined by Daniel Calhoun. Daniel is a dad, cosplayer, author, and hugger extraordinaire, and known by many as Captain Ameridad, which is like my favorite. Uh, Daniel believes cosplay is for everyone. Doesn't matter your skill, weight, height, age, race, or sex, you can show your love and passion for fandom and cosplay. He's vocal about his fight against depression and shares how cosplay and conventions have helped him heal. He has facilitated panel discussions with other cosplayers, sharing their experiences on how the cosplay community has impacted their mental health and well being. Um, he found a supportive community in the North Texas cosplay um, scene, and um, they accepted him exactly as he was. And he'll tell you that this community, as well as his son, literally saved his life. So, Captain Meredith, thank you so much for being here with me today. You're welcome. So you gotta have you gotta have the uh, almost trademarked hat since this is what I wear every time. I love it. It's the it's a little sparkly, fun, patriotic, all the things. And it does my own little spin on Captain America when I do it. So I mean, and for those of you that are that are watching and not listening, um, or the, that are listening and not watching, he has got a cowboy hat on but it's like shiny and it's sparkly secret. and it's it's got it's um, the ones you find at walmart every fourth of july that's exactly um, what this is, is. It? it is a five dollar walmart hat with goggles. captain america goggles that i got off of amazon but it's perfectly captain america texas like it really it really is oh. and i i love that um so i just i think it's interesting how you and i got connected which is I've talked about this on my podcast before, but there is an app that I use called Focusmate because ADHD human here um, can't focus all the time. Yes. I haven't quite literally had squirrel moments. In fact, like I was talking to someone and I was like, oh, look at that squirrel. And they were like, that was an, a literal squirrel, squirrel moment. But I worked with someone um, on there that, that helped you with a video editing, I believe. She was like, you have, to, yep. yeah, you have to meet this guy. And um, she connected us and I'm so grateful she did because your story is really incredible. Like it's, because it's not just one of how you healed, um, but it's one of like how you're continuing to use that to help others heal their mental illness and, and heal themselves, but also have fun and create a community and oh, yeah. just like, I mean, who doesn't want to just have fun? And I kind of mentioned this to you before we started that I feel like I'm too old to play dress up or cosplay or whatever. And I gave you this exact, she, and I gave you this exact look too, when you, you said did. It. <laughs> so I, I do that. To anybody who says that to me, because you're never too old to be a fan of, anything and it's both it's a it's actually kind of a blessing that in the past few years disney and marvel and warner brothers in dc have started doing more than, because it's not as looked down on anymore it's not just oh the nerds from their uh, mom's basement right going out and doing it. no it's you see, I mean, Adam Savage from Mythbusters going to all of them. You see the stars going to all of them with it. But it's not just looked at like it's it's the outcasts. And that's what I was talking about, Z, in the video her and I yeah. did. It's not outcasts anymore. It's more mainstream. And it's truly a community. It is. Right? It is. Like I mean, I found... Oh, go ahead. Well, I found... because. I found, like, like you, you've heard my story on it. I found when I was, because uh, I'm originally from Michigan, moved down here 23 years ago this year. Uh, moved down here because my ex-wife was from here and was down here. And then in 2009, we separated. 2010, we divorced. I knew no one down here except for my ex's friends and family. I had gone out to Scarborough Fair down here, but I hadn't really connected with people. In 2009, I started going to the conventions and I just slowly started meeting people. And these people not only became 
friends. They became family because these are also at this time. It's, it was the family of people that, yeah, we were the ones as kids looked down at for liking Spider-Man, liking Captain America, liking all this. And, oh, well, you're that nerd. You're playing Dungeons and Dragons. Oh, isn't that devil worship? Oh, you're a nerd. Oh. But we all were inclusive and we were all, fa in fact, I just had on Facebook my friend anniversary with one of my longest friends from down here, uh, who's also an artist, uh, Halo Parr, her and Terry Parr from Show Enough Studios. And yeah, I've known them forever because of things like that, of just going to the comic book store and going to the conventions and hanging out with everybody. And, you know, you talk about like the comic book conventions and cosplay. For me, that was like the PTA. That was where I went because we had common interests and, mm -hmm. you know, like that. And I think that that's kind of the cosplay conventions, all of that is even if you love different characters, right? Like, oh, yeah. it's just, it's a community because you're all there to have fun and honor what you love. Exactly. Like, I mean, I'll freely admit, I don't, I'm not big into anime, but I still love a lot. Like, I will see the anime cosplayers at some of these cons. I might not know what the heck character they are or where they're from, but I can sit there and I can admire the work they've put in because oh, yeah. what a lot of people who don't who are not in our community don't understand is it's not just going and buying a costume and throwing it on yes that is like a lot of us that's part of my cosplay is for everyone it doesn't matter your skill level you don't have to sit there and know how to sew right every everything together you can just go to walmart or something and throw but the difference between a cosplayer and a regular person at Halloween who does it is the regular person at Halloween could have the same costume I have. And they're there, they're, they're having fun and all that. But then when I throw it on, you adapt a different persona as well. And you, I, I walk different when I'm dressed as Captain America or as some of my other characters. I act different. Coming up in March, of course, is uh, St. Patrick's Day, and I'll be talking like this the entire time and dying the bear orange and all that. And I dress as the giant leprechaun like that. Uh, holiday season, because I work for a charity. I work for the charity Love for Kids. I dress up as Santa Claus, and I don't just, I'll, I'll sit there and I'll deepen my voice and talk <laughs> like that and just grow the beard out even longer. And it's and all permission to be yourself. And all those other parts of you that you feel like you're not allowed to be. Exactly. It's it's your chance to show your love for a fandom that you have. And that fan, it's the same as sports fans. Right. And nobody thinks... Sports fans, yeah, nobody thinks they're... they're it's any weird, different. like, when they wear their jersey or they paint their whole body, whatever. No one thinks that's weird. Mm -hmm. That's what sports fans do. And you know, you're talking about like now the only ones I'll say are the exception of that are the Raiders fans because let's face it, Raiders fans are cosplayers that are football fans because yes, I, I, I got nothing but any any of your people who are Raiders fans, I am not picking on you. I have nothing but respect for you because yes, you are sports cosplayers is what you are, and some of you I need to get some advice from you for some of the stuff you do. <laughs> I mean, I mean it's, you've seen, it's yeah, you've seen Raiders fans. Oh yeah, I mean. And, Living in Texas, football is definitely like a part of our life. Mm -hmm. um, I grew up in Kentucky. So basketball, you know, is is my, yeah. is where my love of sports is. Um, that shifted this year because my son started playing football. Um, and it, uh, it's, I struggle with it because I'm like, are you going to get hurt? Please don't die. Uh, but mm -hmm. I need to take a step back sometime because he loves it and it's great for him. Um, oh yeah. And you know, football is also about community and like working together. It is. And so it's just, it's, it's different. Th just like one thing I always hear about, and it's, I, I joke about it too. It's like fantasy football is just dungeons and dragons for jocks because you're doing stats and everything like that on that and paper Dungeons and Dragons, you're writing down the stats instead of instead of casting a fireball, your your uh, your people are making a sack on the quarterback. 
I, my mind is blown because that there's so much truth in that. <laughs> and then, you know, what it is. you mentioned like you, you play Dungeons, or do you still play Dungeon and, Dungeons and Dragons? I can't. I, I am, I am a certified dungeon master. I did through the uh, TSR and Wizards of the Coast website years. In fact, I have a card somewhere where <laughs> I took their test on there. I, oh, it's one of my proudest things. I have that there. It's all beat up and everything, but. I have the certified dungeon master's card. That is incredible. Um, I have never played, I'll admit, I've never played Dungeons and Dragons, not because I'm not interested, but because I don't know if I want to make that level of commitment that because right, you let me let me ask you this. Have you ever played Cowboys and Indians or Cops and Robbers as a kid? Yes. Oh yeah. You played Dungeon you, you played Dungeons and Dragons then. You just didn't formalize it. Oh. All yeah, it's it, it, it's using your imagination and making make believe. It's just the people who made Dungeons and Dragons TSR. They formalized the rules so that people all around the world could pick up a book, and I could play with someone from Japan and someone from Australia and someone from Africa, and we oh, would all know the rules. And that's so rare right that like there's something that translates like that mm -hmm. across and cosplay, is the, and cosplay is the same way yes because you talked about anime right like anime mm -hmm. is very japanese you are and i'm actually one of i am a uh admin on a group because we ha we have as i tell people north texas we might not have the largest cosplay community in the country or but we probably have the most organized cosplay community in the because we have one of our groups which is north texas cosplay has over i think now over six thousand members and we organize different things going on um but i've taken the experience with that i'm actually the admin on in a uh scottish cosplay group that i helped form to help people find their community there because i want because even though this is mainstream a lot of us still feel like we are that outcast and we still feel like we are we need to hide it because as you said you feel like you're you're too old to do this and you're like i don't know no you're not no one ever is you just need to find that community so you know hey i can fit in i i'm not the only one and as this is what i say in my cosplaying convention saved my life one is like you are not alone you're not and sometimes that is the only thing you need to hear is you are not alone and it's so easy for us to feel that way when other people who are interested in the same things that we are are hiding it as well well and, and, and then also with with depression and all that it, you, you could be in a room of a hundred people and you don't, you never know because I, I like what people said, especially with social media, social media is a double-edged sword. Yes. Social media, a lot of times, and this will show my age and your age, all you hear is the A side. But the B side is where the magic. You never see the B side of, because people with rare exceptions, people do not put their struggles. They'll, they'll put, yeah, I just got married. Yeah, I just got this. Oh, look at this. Look at this. Look at this. You don't see the, I'm hurting because Whatever. I don't get to see my kids. I don't, I don't feel adequate. I don't feel this. You don't, you see the smiling, happy sunshine. Yes. You don't see the rain and storm. And I, like, I share this story of, of, quite often when it comes to social media. I have a good friend. We used to FaceTime every Friday morning. We were both stay-at-home moms with young kids. Mm -hmm. And she had posted an Instagram story, you know, of her kitchen count, like, counter with her coffee and her green juice and her journal. And she was like, mom time before the kids wake up. And I was like, how did, like, how did you do that? I don't, How? And she laughs and she flips the camera around, counter covered in stuff, except yes. for like a one foot, you know, area where she cleaned it off to take the picture. 
and oh, it, yeah, I'm not going to scroll my camera around because uh, I have organized chaos in my room uh, from all yeah. of my costumes and everything. Well, yeah, you've got a ton of costumes and it's, and I like have, I have a lot of, there's a, some stuff on, on my blog for the, the mental society where I talk about my house and cleaning and my room and how, when I was at the worst, my room got unmanageable. was unmanageable. Oh. Oh, and yeah, because you get you get you get in that phase of you're so depressed you can't do it but then when you want to you look at it and it seems like such an insurmountable task that it's like i don't even know where to start which makes you more depressed and then you don't which start. makes you not want to start it's, it's a it's a vicious spiral and vicious cycle and then you know there were two times i asked for help like and from professionals because i was like i like and one came in and and began to help with some of it. And she started saying things. I don't think that was not from a judgmental place at all. It was from mm -hmm. a safety, like, you know, this is unsanitary. This and I was I oh, I was so embarrassed. Frame of mind, though. Yeah, when you're in that frame of mind, you st you take everything as a, an attack. Yeah. And it was so it was what I heard was you are unsafe, you are unsanitary, you're dirty, you're gross. Mm -hmm. Like that was the, what was playing in my mind. And then exactly. a while later, I reached out to someone who's another professional and I said, it's bad. And she said, send me some pictures. And I sent her pictures and I never heard back from her. And and that, and that, and that affects you too. And it might be something simple that she might have still affect you. Well, and she may have had some family emergency come up and it just mm -hmm. fell off her radar and she just didn't have, but I made the story up that it was too much for her and like, she didn't even want to try because she couldn't. And you see, and the thing is, is like a, it's, what I tell people, it's not you that's making up the story. I mean, it is you, but it's, it's a little voice that's in there. And yeah. that little voice, you can have, you can have 800 people all around you going hey you're good enough you're good enough you're good but that little voice up there and, you can't shut off and that voice comes from depression anxiety what i mean it comes from mm -hmm. the mental illness but it also so often comes from people that mattered to us when we were growing up whether that was exactly. a teacher or a parent or family friend aunt uncle grandparent whatever that voice plays and plays and one of the things like I, when I work with people um around that voice one of my favorite stories is have you heard about the uh you know Led Zeppelin whole lot of love and the incredibleness that is so you know that that echo reverb where yeah you know, yeah so you know those that are younger back in the day they use tape like to record things and it was expensive oh, yeah. and there was only so much. And they um they recorded, they recorded over something. And for those of you who are younger, when you record over, it doesn't necessarily get rid of everything that was there. Um and so in this process, there was a whole lot of love that was you could still hear through the recording. Mm -hmm. And they loved it so much that they actually ended up amplifying it and like making it part of the song. And what I love about that is that even when you record over your old messages, they can still come through. There's still and, echoes of it. Yeah. And you can use that echo to make your current story more beautiful. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah, gr growing I up... Growing up as a kid, yeah, it's like I would hear, "You're weird, you're weird." Oh, well, I've embraced that now. Obviously, uh, I mean, I have I have my dream job because of this. I I get to I work for a charity. I get to dress up in costume. I get to make kids smile. I get to raise money for kids. I get to spend time with my son, and this is my job. I have taken my passion, my love my enjoyment and have turned it around and made it something 
that I can keep a roof over my head and keep food on my table. Yeah. And it's, that is one of the most amazing things when you can make what you love. Oh yeah. And, and what, someone, what's the saying? If you love, if you love what you do, you'll never work a day in, in your life. And like, I say that, but also like, I, I believe too, that we should have those things that are not work that we love that are special and unique. Mm -hmm. And, um, but like, so you got into this what 14 years ago, 13 years ago at this point. Well, okay. The, the, official... for, the, for the convention conventions, 13 years ago, I was doing Scarborough fair before that. Okay. So like, I always tell people I got, I have now 23 years experience costuming and everything. So Scarborough Fair was your uh, your gateway drug, is that? That that was because, okay, <laughs> coming, coming from Michigan, and I lived at oh. the end of nowhere in Michigan. I say the end of nowhere because I can't say the middle of nowhere because that would imply that there's something on the other side. I lived on the tip of one of the peninsulas, 30 miles from the nearest anything. I grew up in a town of 600 people. It was small. Yeah geekiness and all of this the nearest comic book shop and everything was about 30 miles away not a lot of th chances to put, to let your geek flag fly right uh then came from that down to here we have over 100 conventions a year in texas alone and that's and there's comic book shops all over there's anime stores there's all sorts of the i mean i was able to grow and finally let myself be me and i think that's awesome and, and that's so much when i when for me one of the things that i struggled with was feeling not good enough on so many different levels whether oh, that was yeah. like i wasn't thin enough pretty enough smart enough whatever it mm -hmm. was and whether or not that was true that was how that's, that's, all, that's all in there how, that was how i felt and and it seems like when you find that community where you can be your authentic self you can be your geeky mm -hmm. self you can be your nerdy self whatever that is um that is that's where you can start to heal because some of those i'm not good enough voices go away long enough for you to say maybe that's not true exactly i mean and I, like because you you've heard part of my story on that and <laughs> like i tell people and i'm extremely open about my depression and about my suicidal thoughts like i said back in 2009 uh my ex and i separated shortly after halloween i went into what i call my uh my six months of hell we separated the week before Christmas. My grandfather up in Michigan passed away the week after Christmas or well, no, the week after new year's when we got back, we had to put our dog to sleep the week after that, the pipe burst at the house we had. Uh, I had to move out of that house because we, we were going through our divorce and we got rid of it, moved yeah. into an apartment. And then the end of it is my grandmother passed away in April. So in that six months, I got hit after hit after hit after hit. Being down here, all of my family, with the exception of one of my cousins and her son down in Houston, all of my family is up in Michigan. But I knew I could not move 1,300 miles away from my son because my son is my life. Huh. And I was working, I was working nights at a pathology lab. So it's not like I really had the time to go meet people and all this. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to lie. There were a couple of times on a Saturday night when I was home by myself and I had a knife out and I sat there and I'm thinking, it would be better because my son will grow up better without me here. I just, it just too much pain, too much hurt because I felt alone. Yeah. And you, you saying that, and for me, March 3rd, I, mean, I know I remember it like the day, the time, March 3rd, 2016, it was about 1240 or 740 in the morning. I was laying in bed 
my kids were getting ready for school. I didn't have the energy to get out of bed to help get them off to school. And I was laying there and I was like, tomorrow, that's the day I'm going to, I'm going to die. That was it. And I like started my plan as in like, okay, I'm going to actually get up and I'm going to take the kids to school and I'm going to do this. I'm going to write them letters. I'm going to, you know, text my, my ex and make sure that he can pick them up from school. And I mean, like, I just, I had all of this planned out to the point where like, I'm going to do this, not at my house and not in my car, because I don't want my family to have to deal with, like, I'm still like protecting them. And in that, um, because they don't need me, they're better off without me. And for me, and this is obviously not the case for most people. For me, I heard a voice that said, I'm not done with you yet. I don't know what that voice, like what, I think this might be part of what the, I'm not done with you yet is. It may have just been to be there for my kids. I don't know. But what people I think often don't realize is that when you are in that place of wanting to die, you truly don't feel like there's another option. No, and you don't, it, it doesn't matter what anybody else says to you. You're in that such, such a pit. And, and that voice is so loud and so strong that yeah. you, you just, you can't get out of it. You know, you hear, oh, like in your brain, you hear, I'm not good enough. The world's better off without me. I'm such a burden to all these people. I don't want to hurt and then, anybody. And then, on, and then on top of that, you hear that voice also going, yeah. Why, why do you feel so bad about it? other people have it so much worse than you? So why, oh. what, so you can't handle it, but other, and that makes you feel worse and worse and worse too. And like mm -hmm. I say, it's a spiral and you keep going down. And one of the things when I got done with that, that I decided to do, and it was something, and I, would, I had just started going to some of the conventions and all this, but on Facebook, I have a couple of albums because I've done this once or twice. I have a album on my Facebook of, I called it like my journey. And it was something that I did to, to cope. What I would do is because I don't, I didn't like things about me. Mm -hmm. So what I did is I would take a picture every day and I would say how I feel and I'd post it up there. That's not the hard part. The hard part was, is doing that. And letting everybody else, they could do their comments on it. But I told my, I will not comment back. I will, because my comments back will be negative because you'll hear people going, Hey, you're, you're, you're doing good, but you're in your head going, no, I'm not. So what I did is I would just post it with my thought for the day, like thought of how my well being was for the day and how I felt. And I still have those albums. So I could still go back. And I can go back and I can find some of my darkest days where I did not feel like I could go on. But I can look back on that and go, hey, I made it through there. I can make it through others. You know, it's that like you've made it through every hard, like every hardest day of your life. You've made it through them. Mm -hmm. So you could do one more. And yet it doesn't always feel that way. And you no. talked about like that. Oh, why? Like, I don't have it so bad. You know, like I was over here like, look, I mean, I've got this home with two amazing kids and dogs and all of my needs are met. And, you know, what more could I want? And yet I'm over here wanting to. But, end but the it. thing is, is your your 10 in pain might be somebody else's six. Right. But also vice versa. I mean, because you don't. Uh. For you, breaking a nail might be a ruining of a day, whereas somebody else they'll they'll break their whole wrist and just be like, I mean, mm -hmm. I had a, I had a friend in high school, he broke his collarbone during something. He goes, Ah, oh, crap! I broke my collarbone. Okay, for me that would be like I would be screaming in pain and everything, and the world would be ending. But he was just like, I, and if I share this, Jeremy, yes, I'm talking about you. <laughs> but yeah, he. But you it's, never know. You, and that's just how it is. You know, I it was it was March a year ago. Um, I had one of the worst days I've had in a really long time, mm -hmm. and and this was how the day like 
day started off quite lovely. I went and picked up my son's friend because they were going to hang out on our way back to our house. We were in a car accident. It was a fender bender, but like, and it wasn't my fault, but here I had somebody else's kid in my car and, you know, like yep. no one was hurt. It was, you know, it was all fine, but. But it was still the worst day. But, oh, I'm not even done yet. <laughs> then I get home and I've been home for long enough for my kids to get inside and for me to look at the damage a little closer to my car. And my sister calls me and tells me that my mother has, um, they think she has COPD and um, a lung disease and some other things. And luckily she's doing much better. And we figured out some of the stuff that was going on, but it was kind of a, you know, six weeks, six months, like we didn't know. And it was, that was scary because actually today um, is the, 24th anniversary of my dad's death and so like I'm like maybe I may be 43 but I don't want to be an orphan like I'm not ready for that yet um yeah so I get that phone call from my sister I mean she and I talked for a while and it's pretty upset and I went and talked to a neighbor because I just needed to yeah it out to someone and then my kids were like, hey, will you go pick up pizza for us for dinner? Said, yeah, I, you know, I ordered pizza. And as I'm ordering the pizza on my phone, I get a text from one of my PTA mom friends that says, just wanted to let you know, one of our friends' husbands committed suicide last night. So those three things happened within two and a half hours. Yep. It sucked. Like it. Oh. And I realized that, you know, I have no control over any of these things. I, my car is a car. Like it's not damaged that bad. It's still drivable. Even if they didn't have insurance, like the headlight got, you know, knocked out, but I can get it fixed if I have to, but they have insurance. So it's fine. And then I was like, okay, my mom, I'm not a doctor. She is in the hospital with some of the best medical care that she can get. My sister is right there with her. There's nothing, again, there's nothing I can do in that situation. Mm -hmm. And then my friend, I was like, I don't know what to do for her. I have no idea. And there, and there's nothing, there is nothing you can say at that because. Oh, no. But, but what I did do was and to some this may sound ridiculous and I don't care she and I would always take shots of tequila together when we would hang out and we would hang out a lot um and so I picked up pizza I brought it back to my kids and then I went uh, to the liquor store and I bought a bottle of tequila and some limes and I walked into her house and I just said here you go what else do you need yep. and she said I need these people to leave my house. And I said, okay. And I helped get those people out because she needed. And then I was doing something and that felt great to me. And then the next yeah. weekend I was driving by her house on a Sunday. Or, yeah. It was like noon on Sunday, like a week later. And I drove up and I mean, she's one of those friends. Like I just walk in her house. Like there's no, you know, it's just oh, yeah. have the key um, the code to the, the keypad and all that and walked in and she's getting ready to go have brunch with some people because she needed to get out of the house and she was just overwhelmed and she was like I was like what can I do for you right now like what do you need help with and she was like nothing it's fine I'm okay like I'm, I'm getting through this and she opens up her phone and she's like I have 400 and something unread emails and I don't even know that most of these or anything. I just haven't looked at them. And I was like, here. And by the time I left, she had 30 emails that like actually needed some sort of attention from her. Sometimes, sometimes that's just what people need is they need that because it's so overwhelming for them. Yes. That they just need a little something. And you need somebody who's objective in it that, that can go through and help clear it out. And that's to me, that is what the cosplay community is for me. I had, 
I had one time I was I was feeling low. I was feeling real bad. And these people threw a surprise party for me after one of the conventions. And it wasn't my birthday, it wasn't anything. They just wanted to celebrate you. Show period. how I've helped them and show how much I meant to them. And it was about I want to say nine years ago or so, because it just popped up in my memories on Facebook the other day and I'm still seeing the pictures and I was in tears. I, I got up and I was in tears because it's that voice in there tells you that you're not and, worth it. And that people don't. But then when you find that community and they, they help you through that. And I think like one, it's feeling not seen sometimes, even though we are completely seen by people, we don't feel that. But mm -hmm. like, it goes back to that, that community piece. And over and over again, I, in talking with people and my own experience, having a group of people that are your people, whatever that looks like for you. I like, I like the term it's called uh, finding your tribe. Yes. I always, I'm like, you're my people. That's what I always say. Like, you're my people. Um, and I always tell people, I hate people, but I love my, my friends. Yes, I don't, you know, when I work on this, I was talking to someone yesterday. I was like, I love everyone because they are human and they are worthy of dignity, love, and respect. I don't like a lot of them, but I love them. Like, I want to, you know, you, you as a human are worthy I think that you might be a crappy human. I think you've made poor choices, whatever. But like, it's it's that. Like, I don't have to like everyone, but I do have my people that are, you know. And you know, we talked just a, a few minutes about like the the social media, and it's a double edged short sword. I've actually oh, met yeah. some of my best friends on Facebook. Um, Same. I have I have a couple of friends that I met years ago when my geeky self ran an online wrestling federation. I love that. For five years, for five years, we did it where we role played online. It's another thing of like Dungeons and Dragons. It's, and there are a couple of them I have never met in person, but I love them with all my heart. Uh, Kaylee, if you're watching this, yes, you're one of them as well. Uh, <laughs> Is it, you know, it's, I, I've made several really great friends and one, it's funny. Um, we met in a, uh, running nutrition group because I made a weird decision one time that I was going to run a half marathon and something. I mean, if you love half marathons and marathons and you love running more power to you, not my jam. I did it once. I'm glad I did it. Never again. Um, yeah, that, the, the I like the saying is, if you see me running, you better run too, because something's chasing me. Yeah, that's about where I'm at now. But I I mean, I finished the half marathon. I did it. I'm really proud of that. Um, but I was in this, you know, group and um, I had thought for a long time about becoming vegan, like, you know, and I was there for the most part, but I was scared and it's a whole other conversation. But there was another woman in the group Hi, Kate. I love you. Um, but Kate, she and I started talking in like a comment section on this post in this group that we were in. And then eventually it was like, uh, maybe we should just like, nobody wants to hear all of this. Like, let's, you know, move into a private message, you know, whatever. Yeah. And I went to her wedding in Italy in 2018 like I, there were 17 people at her wedding. Mm -hmm. I flew across the world because she's that important to me. Um, and so like, yeah, this started a, around a conversation about whether or not I wanted to go vegan. And I mean, I have, I have one of my friends in the cosplay community here that our friendship started out as a joke from a meme that goes uh my idea of flirting uh i like bread and this person and yes stacy i am talking about you this person as a gift got me 
the baguette bread pillow. I I would jump up and go to my son's room, but I'm a little afraid of a 14 year old boy's bedroom. Um, but he has. I know he. I got him that same exact pillow because he he also has a tortilla blanket. Um, because oh, yeah. I. You know what? I think I might need to on the website. He will kill me for this, but he does tortilla faces that he started a million years ago. It feels I probably have 300 pictures of him where he made a face with a tortilla and he holds it up. And I mean, from the time he's little and he still does it. And I will take a picture every time he does it until he won't do it anymore. Um, And he knows that it's special to me. And so I appreciate that. But yeah, I mean, like, so those sorts of things where you connect with someone over bread. Mm-hmm. Or, but I mean, it doesn't have to be a big thing. It's just a, you can find your community online. And I think like with yep. the pandemic too, that was really, like a, that was life-saving for some people. It was life-saving. And then it was also, I mean, like for people like me, who like, yeah, like you said in my intro, cause I put it on there myself, hugger extraordinaire to not be able to go hug my friends. Yes. Almost killed me because I mean, it's like, I to go it. from, yeah. Just, ugh. And like, that makes so much sense to me because I like to connect with people, I truly believe that there's power in healing and touch. Consensual Mm -hmm. touch, like let's make that so nobody comes at me. But like, there's something about that. And especially for me, I know that 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 is not for everyone, that there are people that don't like hugs and there are people that, and I get that, I respect that, which is why I said consensual. But for me, snuggles, hugs, holding hands, whatever, all of those things, I love. And so, yes, I get that. And luckily, I guess I still had my kids who still like to snuggle with me. So like I got mm-hmm. some of it that way. Um, but yeah, like you're disconnected from people, but right. You can still find those communities online. Oh yeah. And we did, I, we would do social distancing, hanging out and uh, uh, zoom was a lifesaver for so many people like this because we do a, uh, uh, online movie nights or online gaming sessions we did for for my birthday because i usually do cosplay karaoke for my birthday oh that sounds so fun in 2020 in 2020 we couldn't go we actually had and i had about 10 or so people i had a zoom call cosplay karaoke birthday party that sounds pretty perfect to me Honest, I mean, really, like it was not not as good as in person, but it was still great. I think you know, all of us were struggling so much with like, how do we stay connected? How do we stay safe at the same time? Like, there's there were so many layers to that, Mm -hmm. and so like now that you're back in person, I mean, you're doing live event like in person events again, right? Oh yeah, I'm doing for the charity. I we we've partnered our the charity I work with, Love for Kids. We partnered, like I was telling you, with the uh, Allen American Hockey Team, and we provide our, our costume characters out there for all of their theme nights. And I, I, we just have a good old time where we get to see, make kids smile out there. Um, I will be at a gym, a boxing gym grand opening Saturday morning in Allen as costume characters they're making a donation to the charity and we're going to be there i love that you know it it makes me think though of here in denton where i live um we had the denton spider-man i'm sure you saw oh yeah oh yeah like, I know him and he's here's the joke here's the joke around the conventions the joke is i know everybody the punchline is it's not a joke <laughs> well you know the thing that was interesting to me about for a good chunk of the time with the Denton Spider-Man was people really didn't know who he was. Oh yeah. Like he was just uh, 
the spider I, like there there's the uh, denton comic and art fest that this will be the third year of uh in august and brian kelly he's the one who puts that on i've been to the last two ones i've done one of the things i've done is i've ran the cosplay hideaway which is something we came up with here through north texas cosplay we have a little area set aside because when you're out in the costumes wardrobe malfunctions so i will provide i have all of my own supplies and provide a little repair area where i have thread needle hot glue super glue and all that and we do and this is something we do just to show support and i have my portable kit that i bring up there I love that. and it's just something that we all do and can i just this is gonna sound goofy but there's something too there about you're there to help heal like you're healing the costumes you're there to repair and to heal and to exactly. show support and i think that that's like about the community, right? You are there to be exactly. Part That's of you. exactly what the community is about. And the thing about and what's terrible is I don't even remember the Spider-Man appears name, and it doesn't matter because for so long no one really knew who he was. Like it was just because he didn't do it to be famous. He did no, it. He, did he it wanted to, to bring joy. Style. That yeah. was it. He wanted and to bring joy to people. That's why a lot of us do it. That's why a lot of us we have our our cosplay. Captain America, Dad, uh, North, uh, Denton Spider Man, North Texas Spider Man, all of those, uh, we have it because we do that. We become a persona. Not mm-hmm. only does that help those kids, but it helps us heal as well because it helps us be our best self. We're not, when there's been so many times I have been in the depths of my depression. But no one can tell because I'm out there and I am using that mask and I'm using that to not just help me, but to help them. And while I think like some people listening might think putting a mask on and hiding or whatever is bad, don't do that. And yet I would argue that sometimes that fake it till you make it or like, hey, you know Mm -hmm. what? I'm showing up as Captain Ameridad and he is powerful and strong and people love him. And then you can go mm-hmm. with, but I am him. Like, that's my alter ego. Exactly. You can, because the thing is, is I'm not putting on a mask to be someone else. I'm putting on a mask to be another part of myself. It's wow. it's me turned up a few do- n- a notches. It's me dealing. I, it's not like I'm being someone completely different. I am me. But right. I'm the me that's happy and that will help. And, I, you know, we all have different roles that we play in our lives, right? Like there's, and and I think that, that sometimes those roles that we have to play, like for me, mom, you know, whatever, like when you, when that's how you see yourself all the time, you forget that there are those other parts of you that are just you. It's something you can use almost as reinforcements to help fight that little voice that's up there that says you're not good enough because I will have that little voice and then I'll have that persona of Captain America going, look, look at the good he does. I'll get one thing to show you an example, one thing that I use to help me to know that I'm not alone. So I've been doing Captain America for many, 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 many moons. And I had my original shield. Oh, I well, I got me a new shield and a, I was retiring my original one and a friend of mine gave me an idea. So what I have done is I took my shield. Look at all those signatures signatures. from all of the lo- from local cosplayers. And it's not just the front, it's the front and the back. I have hundreds of signatures on here to show the lives I've touched and to show and the impact I've made so that even when I am at my lowest and I have it hanging on my wall here where I can see even when I'm at my lowest and I think I'm alone, I can look up and I can see that and see, you know, the literal hundreds of people that I have touched. And, you know, you're saying, I'm like, man, what if we all walked around with a shield, a notebook, whatever, Mm -hmm. that people that, 
we matter to and that matter to us sign or even I mean, exactly. and sometimes you impact people and that you don't even realize that you're gonna that you're impacting well i i've i've had where uh back in 2020 right before the pandemic i did my panel of cosplay and convention save my life at uh fandom legacy con in plano and when i was done I literally did have someone come up to me and say, thank you. I have felt alone for so long. Mm -hmm. And it brought me to tears there. I mean, it touched me so much that it just, to know, and that's why when I do the panel, when I'm out doing it, you saw it on the recording. Mm -hmm. I throw my phone number out. I throw any way to connect me because I know what it feels like to feel like you're alone. And I, you know, I share, I share a lot about my mental health journey because I do believe that there is still a stigma and you kind of talk about like, there's a stigma around cosplay too. Um, mm -hmm. And, and because of that stigma, I talk about it because I don't want other people to feel like they can't. Exactly. Um, and I don't want people to feel like they're the only one because I felt that way for so long. I felt like I'm the only one that feels like this all the time. And I remember one time every year I talk of like on March 3rd, I post about like my journey and I don't care if people are tired. I it's, it's my story to tell and I get to tell it as much and as often as I want to. Um, and one time I had someone reach out to me and said, I went and got help because of you. Exactly. And, and now, Amanda, I, I, I hate to cut you off on it, but yeah. now I actually do. I have to go. <laughs> oh, I do too. Yes. So let me, let's wrap up then. Um, so thank you, Daniel, so much for being here and giving me all this time. Um, I'm going and, to- Anytime. Anytime. And I'm going to reach out to you so that I can um, there's play dress up with you and I can figure out what that, what, what my alter ego is exactly. Um, but I'm going to link um, the, a video of that um, panel that we talked about as well as your mm -hmm. charity that you work for and where they can find you on social media and all the places. So if you are interested in cosplay, if you just want to talk to someone, it sounds like Daniel, you're willing to listen. Oh my God, yeah, because cosplay is for everyone. And we all need to feel our best and our strongest and honor every part of our ourselves. Um, and it's okay to have fun. In fact, it's yep. great too. So thank you again for joining me. And um, with that, we've reached the end of our episode. So thank you so much for listening and learning about how mental health and society meet. Now go out, open a conversation, and discover how mental health is experienced in your world. You can find more episodes of The Mental Society, all the places you find your favorite podcast. And please be sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on anything. There are a whole lot of other resources and articles on our website, thementalsociety.com. And again, in the show notes, I'm gonna link all of the places that you can find um, uh, Captain Ameridad, just like my favorite. Um, and remember that you are not alone. Hope and help are all around you. And until next time, this is Amanda Dolan, wishing you good health, mental and otherwise.